They were trailblazers and literary geniuses, and the acclaim they earned during the short period they were alive would nearly match the dark and unglamorous law of their demise. Three of the six Bronte siblings all died in their late 20s and 30s during the mid-1800s in the small village of Haworth, England. Some say it was due to one successive broken heart after another. Officially, it was due to tuberculosis running rampant in the area at the time. But unofficially, the cause was almost more disturbing and repulsive than one could even fathom, even by the imaginative and illustrious Bronte sisters. Patrick Bronte was an Irish priest born in 1777 who spent most of his life in England during the 19th century. He and his wife Maria Branwell had six children total, including his third child Charlotte, born in April of 1816, who was a poet and acclaimed writer for her novel, Jane Eyre, published in 1847 when she was around 31 years old. Soon after Charlotte was born, Patrick, Emily and Anne were also born in Yorkshire, England. Emily Jane Bronte, born in July of 1818, was the author of the classic English novel, Wuthering Heights. When she was just seven, she had already lost her mother to cancer, and her two older sisters Maria and Elizabeth, to tuberculosis. By the age of 20 she was teaching at Law Hill School in Halifax in 1938, but returned home to live in Haworth with the rest of her family. Branwell, the only brother, though troubled, was quite a talented writer and artist, being the first poet of the family to be published. But he had grown weaker and weaker leading up to September of 1848, when he passed away due to tuberculosis, made worse by his alcoholism and opium addiction. He was 31 years old at the time of his death. Emily later died of tuberculosis herself in December of that same year. She had deteriorated so quickly that the carpenter that built her coffin noted that he had never made one so small for an adult. She was 30. After enduring so much tragedy in so short a period of time, Anne, the youngest of the siblings, suffered such grief that she neglected her health and had fallen ill over Christmas of that year. By January, her doctor told her and her family that she was diagnosed with consumption, which was likely incurable. Upon hearing the news, Anne reportedly said, I have no horror of death. But I wish it would please God to spare me because I long to do some good in the world before I leave it. She took a trip in May of 1849, hoping the fresh sea air would help alleviate her symptoms, but she was weaker and thinner than ever. She passed away on May 28, 1849 at the age of 29. Charlotte would live on to marry in 1854, but she died in March of 1855 at the age of 38 due to complications with her first pregnancy. Patrick was stunned. He had just lost all of his surviving children, the majority of them in just a span of six years. Patrick insisted on a formal investigation into the troubling deaths in his family. Though the average age of death for people in the area at the time was around 26 years old, Bronte took a personal interest as to why death had fallen so quickly and heavily upon his household. Through the investigation conducted in 1850 by Benjamin Herschel Babbage, staggering and revolting discoveries were made about the town of Haworth. Due to a massive population increase in the area, and because sanitation efforts were not made to accommodate such an influx of people, hygiene and public health matters had gone by the wayside. People were relieving themselves, practically in the streets, as proper sewage and lavatories had not yet been established. In the poorest of homes, food was quite scarce. Perhaps worst of all, is that the more people you have, the more deaths you must have. And more deaths lead to a more crowded graveyard. And the graveyard in Haworth was on top of a hill. The number of bodies lying in the local cemetery became so inflated that they were not decomposing properly. This led to body fluids and other harmful bacteria to leach into the groundwater. Groundwater collected and enjoyed by the local living community from the well not too far from the graves themselves. No matter the social status or lifestyle, all of Haworth was drinking the same contaminated water, enriched by their own human waste and the decaying loved ones nearby. Immediately following the investigation, it was presented to the General Board of Health, and repairs and improvements were made to the small town sanitation infrastructure. While it will never be confirmed whether or not the Bronte family were victims of a population boom and the subsequent widespread tainting of the town's most precious resource, it's evident that they had indeed become a part of a much less romantic work of non-fiction.